Hello, I'd like to talk about um, a bit about my testimony, share some experience for perhaps anyone who's new to Christianity or anyone seeking to come to that knowledge and that uh, surety and uh, I'd like to give a few thoughts and a bit of my experience and how I've suffered with uh, difficulty learning had arrested development and fell behind and uh, but it's just to help anyone uh, come to the confidence, come boldly to the throne of grace and so I pray to our, our Heavenly Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that uh, this may be edifying and bless a blessing. I just want to share just um, uh, hypothesis and some considerations and uh, being a, a Christian um, a born again Christian a King James Bible believer and how I've come by by faith by trusting in trusting in the word trusting in my testimony trusting in the Lord and Heavenly Father and being uh, led by the Holy Spirit corrected in the Holy Spirit and uh, lifted in the Holy Spirit, expounded in the Holy Spirit in knowledge and wisdom, in love in my heart, my heart's been expounded and I've also um, fallen by the wayside and those things uh, shrink, they deteriorate and they need to be exercised and it's, um, if, any, if you're anything like me, you throw the towel in when things get difficult, difficult or if you're hurt or wounded you, you tend to want revenge and You've got that uh, nature, that flesh, and uh, and you're and you may perhaps seeking to put that off, overcome, and outgrow your uh, carnality or your nature, your inheritance. And so this talk's going to be about a lot about um, inheritance, blood inheritance, um, and some thoughts about the Jews, some thoughts about the Lord Jesus and his bloodline and his, his inheritance. Israel's inheritance and the inheritance that's been uh, granted to the Gentiles to be grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel in Jesus Christ and so if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ you're neither male or female bond or free that we're all we're all one in Christ Jesus and uh, just want to share some of my a uh, bit of uh, a scripture James one. Uh, James the servant of God is chapter 1 and of the Lord Jesus Christ to, 12, the, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire I think that means complete wanting nothing if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not abradeth means it, that the heavenly father is gentle and loving he's not he won't scold you uh, he's uh, outstretched he's he's open he's jealous he wants he wants this he, he desires this uh, for his son's sake for us to experience that, uh, that gracious gift and it should, uh, I'll read that again if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given him or her so we're all we're all considered to be uh, sons so given him but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed that's the same for any any anyone seeking to come to the come to the uh, knowledge of uh, God the Father and his son Jesus Christ and salvation and uh, eternal life that if you doubt you, you're you're questioning God so you're not really you're not going to receive a result 
your, your, it's not putting your trust in God, you've got to fully put your trust and believe that he's faithful to receive an answer or to the, to the believer to grant wisdom or, or things they need if it, it's uh, according to his will. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let no man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I can attest to that. Let the brother of low degree receive in that, rejoice in that he is exalted. And I can also relate to that very much. So, being a brother of low degree, the Lord's uh, afforded me to rejoice in that, that I've been lifted up, I've been completed. Uh, like all saints, we're to esteem each other better than ourselves, so we've all got that loving, gracious equalness in the eyes of our, our Lord and Heavenly Father. But we've all got different talents and responsibilities, we're different. We, we've got different gifts, we've got different statures in a sense, in a, in our capabilities, in our gifts, the Lord gives us different gifts, but we all, all, all in that, uh, all in His grace, in that spirit, in that one spirit. But the rich, in that He made low, in that He is made low, because as a flower of the grass He shall pass away, for the sun is no sooner risen from the burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace of, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So um, I wanted to share that, in just to hopefully that will lift somebody and give them confidence. I forgot a responsibility to uh, check everything. Uh, I've been given a faithful standard. The King James Bible is a faithful standard, and I, I just that was my first Bible. I, I, that's our family Bible, and uh, that's the Bible I've stuck with. I haven't checked out other Bibles, but it just causes confusion, and you learn the lessons of the corruption of and the undermining of all these other Bibles to corrupt the standard. And so we, 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 the Lord's promised that he will, you know, guide us, he will help us, and, and it's our responsibility to check. So if you're seeking to know which Bible, you, you, Heavenly Father is faithful to guide you in, in truth, and that that's been my testimony. I put my trust in the Lord, I ask him. And he leads me, he teaches, and, and he answers. And I'm very grateful that I've been able to come to that testimony. And that will never be taken away. Um, and so, we're to, we're to, if you look at the example of the Berean saints, how they, how they checked everything, how they measured. And that's very important. We, it's our responsibility to check which is tr what's true and what's not true. And that's why we, we have a faithful standard. Now, now the Gospel is a lifetime study. It's um, like a blueprint, like a, a puzzle that we have to piece together. And we can make mistakes and we can uh, be in error. But the Lord's faithful when, we, when we're seeking correction to, to teach us and guide us in our... Wherever, wherever we stand, uh, you know, the gospel, we're, uh, repentance, you know, uh, a religion teaches you've got to do this and you've got to do that. and But really, you've just got to come to the throne of grace as you are, a sinner, and believe. That's all I did. And then the, you, the Lord will start there. He's faithful to you, save all sinners. And he starts the moment you receive him in your life. And he kind of, it's like he gives you the end at the beginning. That's the being born again. It's like you, you you take like Paul. If you look at Paul's life, it's it's kind of the, a reflection of the saints. It's like the grace has already been laid down in, in the scriptures as a pattern for us to test, so we know we're on the right track. 
or, or we're off we're off track we're way off track so so we each have to seek uh, that correction otherwise we can harden or we can we can wither be sifted I've, I've sailed to the close to the wind so many times in my life and uh, the Lord's faithfully helped me back and uh, helped me uh, endure in that um, promise he's faithful to begin uh, to come to finish with that which is beginning my began in my life if I allow that and if I don't um, you know fall down and uh, continue in, in in weakness in my flesh um, so this talk I really wanted to share some thoughts about um, blood inheritance uh, particularly the the Jew, the Jews. Um, if you think about uh, the Jews, and you and you and you think about all the world, there's n there's not really in a human sense any real difference. We're all human. We're all we're all creative. We're all sinful. Um, and and there's a lot of persecution against the Jewish people. But you, uh, when you consider it, there's a in our society, in our Gentile society, we have. Um, we have class system we have, because of iniquity, the way the world's uh, unfolded because of uh, wickedness and greed and pride and the uh, the checking of that by uh, powers, by uh, uh, lawful powers to uh, keep that in check. So we've got um, a sovereign God over the world and he appoints people um, in, in power to act lawfully and then you have people in power who act unlawfully as you do in society it's just like the Jews you've got a, a high society Jews um, have middle class Jews you have uh, lower class Jews you have criminal Jews and you have um, upright Jews you have believing Jews and non-believing Jews and you have you, you've even got Jews who may not be Jews uh, it, in in a physical sense, not in a spiritual sense. I'm, I'm just talking uh, physically. So there's a. It's easy to go off on conspiracies about the Jews, and uh, you must consider that um, we're all we're all human, we're all precious, and these people have um, you know. You think if you were a Jew and uh, you're a, you're a young you're a young child you just think of the children who are growing up in that under that uh, title under that he inheritance or heritage and you're surrounded in a world by all this anti-semitism and uh, the uh, stirring of that anti-semitism by evil people to persecute the Jews you know um, the devil hates the Jews uh, many powers in this world hate the Jews the Nazis hated the Jews um, and really even the Roman Catholic Church are, are, are against the Jews by their doctrine uh, you know they teach that uh, the Jews are over you know and, and the Christian Church has replaced, replaced Israel that's completely nonsense which is why we need to trust God not what people say so really this is an invitation to uh, check and measure and consider and uh, be careful of presumptuous sins I've been caught out swept up by these things, swept away thankfully the Lord's uh, steered me, helped me carve my way through through all the lies and um, machinations so that, that that's an important thing to consider if you know anything about the enemy how um, he likes to make things topsy-turvy if you look at the Roman Empire they like to change things, they like to own, own things, time, calendars, measurements. So you've got all these contradictions, you know, like black is white and white is black. And today, evil's good and good is evil. So, uh, consider those roots and what's afoot. So that leads me into uh, blood inheritance, uh, Genesis. Uh, look at the fake science, Darwinism. Uh, versus creationism. Now, Darwinism is uh, 
heavily sponsored in schools, colleges, and uh, all around the world. And creation's been thrown by the wayside. And if you're honest and you evaluate and measure each science, it, there's only one that stands uh, consistent and true, and that's creation. Creation science. Now you get these atheists saying, oh, you know, I believe in science, don't believe in God. Well, God's, God is a scientist. He's a creator. He's a physicist. He's a chemist. He, 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 he's sovereign, all-wise, all-knowing, omnipotent, omnipresent, supreme, eternal. He can see all things from beginning to end and back again. Constantly, all things are before him. And if you trust God, he will guide your footsteps and teach you how to measure, how to examine, how to evaluate, how to come to a certain knowledge of uh, the world and all the devices and how uh, you quite easily get the wall pulled over your eyes and thrown off track. So this is really to an outreach to uh, help anyone with the difficulties I, I've had to face. Uh, and just some few uh, thoughts for people to consider. Well, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares, Phares and, and Zara of Thamar. And Phares begat Esron, and Esron begat Aram, and Aram begat Amidab, and Amidab begat Nason, and Nason begat Shahom, Salom, and Salom begat Booz of Rakab, and Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed, Obed begat Jesse, Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Rabboam, and Rabboam begat Ab Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, and Josephat begat, begat Joram, and Joram begat Isaiah, and Isaiah begat Jophan, Jophan, and Jophan begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconus, Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon and after they, they were brought to Babylon Jeconias begat Salafiel and Salafiel begat Zor Zorobabel Zorobabel and Zorobabel begat Abuab Abud and Abu <laughs> Abu begat Ilikim, if forgive my pronunciation, and Ilikim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Akim, and Akim begat Elud, and Elud begat Eliza, and Eliza begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, a husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are fourteen generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are fourteen generations. So there we have the bloodline. Now blood inheritance has always been from the beginning, from the father. So if your father's a Jew, his sons will be Jewish. Even if he marries a Gentile, the predominantly if you if you, you study Genesis it's, um, and genes, it's X and Y. Y is the male, X is the female. So, predominantly the sons will always inherit the uh, Y gene. So they are of the father. That's why you inherit your father's name. So you have this inheritance through the blood. So, but when you look in the world, you see that... Uh, if you if 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 you want to get into uh, Israel, you've got to prove your generations, your Jewishness through the, the the female line. So you have to consider well, what which is true? Is it that or is it 
what the word of God teaches. The Jew, you know, the, uh, the Old Testament is a, a Jewish book. It was given to the Jews. It was written by the Jews. It was written, uh, Moses was commissioned to write Genesis. And then we have the record of the pre, pre-Israel. Um, Abraham was taken from uh, Gentile. Isaac was uh, his seed. His son and his and Isaac's son was Jacob, and and that's Israel. So there we have the inheritance, and then and that's a type of um, the Godhead, and then and so we've got the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, and all the children of Israel, and uh, and uh, um, you consider a, a, a roof was a Gentile, and. Uh, but the Jewishness was never lost, so there, there it is, stark and the obvious, that um, the inheritance is uh, from the Father. And um, if you consider the, uh, when uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, the man, and uh, God, fully man, fully God, came first, when he came at his first advent, uh, the whole of uh, Israel had a record of his inheritance and uh, Jesus was the heir to, the, to be the king of Israel and that uh, and it's my hypothesis that the uh, the tribes would have known that it, uh, maybe they weren't looking but it would have been known so because Jesus was rejected it so so was his uh, blood inheritance and that's why you get the story that uh, that Mary was raped by a Roman, and uh, although those lies were, you know, those those uh, unbelieving Jews at the time who rejected the Messiah would have known, and so they had to mask the truth and uh, create uh, stories that would continue on generationally. And at the time of Jesus' uh, first advent, um, we had the old um, Babylonian empires dominated by the Roman Empire. So if you look through the history, the uh, chronologic, 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 oh, the order of, um, forgive me, the order of uh, history and uh, the captivities, and you've got the predominant uh, tribes, you've got uh, the Babylonians and the Greeks conquered the Babylonians, and then the Romans, the Greeks, and, and then the Romans took over the world and then uh, captured and uh, took Israel and uh, Jerusalem captive so it was predominantly overseen by the Roman Empire and the Babylonian old pagan world order and so that's what Jesus arrived in his advent right in the middle to deliver his people from, from the world and these systems uh, and so it, it, it continued on as, as, as the word of God testifies the prophecy and we've got this turning upside down of the truth <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and it's been always been my consideration and when you consider the time of the Old Testament if you follow Paul's ministry and also the um, possessed man with the legions from uh, Capernaum Capernaum, of all the districts in Israel, and how I think if we were to be able to see those times, we'd be quite surprised how similar, uh, sort of, sort of modern they were in in a organisational sense. Uh, and you probably wouldn't see any change. You'd probably see, uh, you know, there's brick houses in the Old Testament. Uh, David has a brick house with with window panes and. Uh, stuff like that so you know not really nothing's new nothing is really new it just changes its face and, and, and uh, you know pride thinks that we're getting more intelligent but actually the most intelligent people were were older because the genetic inheritance is withering if you think of uh, the first the earlier people the, the genetics were so untainted that these people were living 500 years and people think that's unbelievable 600 years or and so forth and uh, people just dismiss it as nonsense but they're not considering genetic inheritance 
So um, you've got to ask your question, well, why don't they teach the two sciences in school so children can uh, study and come to their own, own conclusions? No, you're taught Darwinism as a fact. And it's not factual, it doesn't stand up, it's not scientific. It, it's it's faith-based, it's not evidence-based. Creation is evidence-based. An oak tree will only produce oak trees. Uh, a dog species can only create, uh, reproduce into a dog species. They might be evolving in that species and hybridizing. But a dog will never be a cat. A cat will never be a dog. A carrot will never turn into a turnip. A bit of slime will never evolve into a gorilla. So you've got this complete delusion and unsoberness and, and lies compared to what's right before your face. The blood inheritance, father to son. The genetic inheritance and creation inheritance, the uh, unfolding of consistency, how things are, how things were, how things are, how things will be. So, something to consider, um, so, the time of Jesus, uh, they possibly would have known, you know, the world would have known who he was, if they, well not all the world, but people in, in authority with the knowledge, with the records. And we've got um, the Roman Empire, after the, uh, Jesus' death, burial and resurrection, and, and the Gospel went forward, we had um, and we had the gospel and the word uh, spread by the uh, apostles and the church and the saints and the opposition against that from th that time right up until today it continues adversity you've got there's two forces that you've got you've got um, God in heaven and Christ on the right hand of God we have the record of his uh, atonement salvation on the cross his finished work and we have the uh, knowledge of the devil because we've, God's told us of the devil and when you examine it it, it, it it fits it stands true just like creation it stands true and when you look at um, Israel you, it, it's almost like our world really in those days we've got uh, like council estates we've got boroughs districts um, and it's really very similar. So you've got the Roman order, and you can see that pattern in our modern world. With, you know, with things mixed in it, with um, the old, you know, the truth buried amongst that. So it's very hard to um, s sharply see the truth amongst all the uh, lies and uh, the predominance against the truth. And you've got a very fine line of truth and you've got all this fizz all this uh, misinformation and lies and uh, error surrounding that that very fine line of truth and uh, I'd like to I've always considered well the, Jew, the uh, faithful Jewish people especially in the temple and you think about when they come back to, uh, from captivity to rebuild build the temple that uh, that was there in Jesus' time. And the uh, Samaritans uh, the, uh, wanted to uh, help the Jews build the city wall and build the temple, but uh, it was only allowed if your DNA wasn't spoiled you ha and you had to prove your lineage to be able to take part, otherwise it would corrupt the seed, corrupt the gene pool. And the Samaritans had strayed away from their inheritance and uh, got caught out by paganism, which was a consequence of uh, the behaviour of um, the elders of like Judah. And um, going astray, and it led everybody astray. So when the, when, the, when the elders go astray, all the younger follow, you see. And there's consequences, generational consequences. And, and the uh, Samaritans uh, got tangled up in pagan ideas, but they kept their their Jewishness, and uh, many people wanted to take part when the Jews were helped back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple from the Babylonian captivity. 
straight into another captivity. And uh, but they, the temple was built, and, and uh, at that time their uh, faith was restored, their uh, temple was restored, and the blessings were restored for a period. And then apostasy sets in, and the uh, dominance of the Romans came, capt captured them for, as a consequence. Uh, but the, the elders of the uh, people of Israel would have had a faithful. That's where we've got, got the. This is where the uh, record comes from. If you're looking throughout all the scriptures, uh, the Lord's given all the. All the record of it is in. No, the Lord knows every single child of Israel, every seed of Israel. And uh, it's a faithful record, it's a faithful record of the genetic inheritance of these bloodlines from the 12 tribes from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and uh, their children and we've got the record in Matthew of that faithful faithful lineage and then if you look in Luke's gospel it, we, we have uh, the same the same inheritance but it goes all the way back to Adam and then from Adam it, it goes all the way up to Abraham and then from Abraham to Christ the King of the Lord and the God uh, Son of God, Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David, the King. You see, he's, he's uh, inherit um, the heir of David in a in a sense to who who the Lord put David on the throne in for, in his stead. So he's the Son of David in that sense, and also so a Son of Abraham, because that's where his seed comes from. So Jesus is the Father of Abraham, or the Creator of Abraham, and um, uh, spiritually, but physically. Uh, Jesus' uh, inheritance on his uh, on the X side comes from uh, Abraham or well Mary. I'm, uh, I'm not sure of Mary's uh, inheritance, but his uh, his wise is uh, heavenly. It's from God the Father. It's or it's his own. It, it's um, His um, omnipotence and uh, power, and uh, he came from the uh, seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and there's a faithful record. So we have the uh, genetic inheritance, and that record was maintained. And so people have had a knowledge of this record, and so they would have known, if they were honest, they would have known who Jesus was. And uh, after the, um, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, and the rejection of of the Messiah, the consequences followed. The, uh, the Jews were scattered, and uh, the Jews chose to marry. You know, you get in bed with the Roman Church. And there's that. Oh, let the let His blood be upon us. And that prophecy, uh, sadly was fulfilled and the Jews were scattered and persecuted from that day forward. Not that justifies it, but that was a consequence of rejecting uh, Jesus Christ, their, their Lord, their Saviour and their God. So not only did the uh, Jews have a record, but um, when, um, this is my consideration, when the Romans uh, quashed the rebellion, destroyed the temple, did they obtain the records? Did the Jews obtain, uh, maintain the records, or were they lost? Well, they wouldn't have time to um, gather up all their... They may have stashed them, they may have got them out, but it, it, it was unlikely. And um, possibly the uh, Romans uh, kept the record and continued with it in, the, in their possession. Therefore, this is my consideration, this is uh, perhaps how people are targeted because uh, somebody in secret has maintained the family history and they've been tracing it. So they can um, work out with their knowledge of genetic inheritance because the world knows the truth about you. Evil people know the truth about genetic inheritance. But they want people to be dumb and shut down and they teach them Darwinism, and if you take, if you believe a lie, you're held in that lie. 
and people, evil people think, well, if you're gullible enough to believe it, it serves you right. So it's very important to know how to evaluate and measure what is true and what's not true, and that's why you need a standard. You need a testimony of the grace of God, the Son of God, and the gift of God the Father in His Son. And once you've received that, you've received a faithful report of the Word. And then, you, then you're able to understand the faithful written Word, which is of the same source, it's of the same heart, it's of the same mind, because it's of God. So that's, that was why I wanted to uh, give this talk, to just to consider where I have the um, Roman powers today, the Roman Catholic Church maintained secretly that uh, genetic inheritance and uh, are targeting Jewish bloodlines that they may uh, either captivate manipulate and all sorts of evil machinations against the people of uh, that bloodline and when you look at blood you've got the uh, rhesus monkey blood you know you know we're not from monkeys and, and once you know that we're actually from um well there's three if you, if you follow the uh bloodlines of uh, from noah there's a uh, three three strands of seed and you've got a completely um, absence of any any love, and then you've got the the Jews and the Gentiles, and then you've got um, so it's all grown, it's all grown outwards and mixed. So um, it's impossible to know what's what. But if you had a record of who's who, you would possibly be able to. Uh, pick out certain strands and uh, follow certain bloodlines to captivate, to manipulate, to exploit, to handle, to control, to keep control, keep a lid on power, to keep a lid on these people. And uh, whenever the Jews were only persecuted for one reason, because they were talented and they were they, they, they were a blessing really to any because they flourished and they um, helped help their communities. They were faithful to communities. And I'm talking about the, you know, the average um, mentality of the Jewish people. And so they would bless people and nations wherever they go. But we've, there's a, so, there's a, it, it's natural for the flesh to measure and compare. Oh, look at him, he's got more than me. You know, that's not fair. So there's always this suspicion, and that's easy fermented with lies to stir up the crowd, stir up the ignorant mob against the Jewish people to get rid of them because people were jealous because they were gifted and they were gifted because of their inheritance, and that inheritance was afforded by grace through their lives. And, that, and they maintain those blessings through their DNA, through their inheritance. And when you look in Israel today, they're one of the most advanced people in many areas of science, technology, agriculture, horticulture, space, science, um, computers, technology, and uh, they're despised and they're feared. And the, pe the, the, pers the thing that wants to get rid of them is the devil, because these this is a, a faithful, lawful witness of the truth, you see, because they are God's chosen people. Although they're scattered, they're cut off. If you read uh, the prophecy of Zechariah, uh, the Lord said he would smite himself, he'd smite the shepherd. He'd lay his life down and the sheep would be scattered. So, because Jesus was rejected, they cut they were cut off from their inheritance because they rejected it when it came in the flesh and that was Jesus Christ, the Messiah and so they were spread to the winds and stamped on and you only have to read history if you're a, um, a holocaust denier you're, you're so 
dense and stupid, you really need to examine yourself. And if you and, and these Holocaust deniers are just you know, right wing Nazi sodomite fascists, arrogant, hard, hard hearted psychopaths, narcissists who hate the Jews because they got this, they got their inheritance. You see, uh, but God is outstretched, and um, for all people to r require that. That inheritance, you can receive a complete inheritance in Jesus Christ, and the Jews can be grafted back into the living vine through their Messiah. And people who've never been in the vine can be grafted in with Israel. That is the faithful promise, of it. that's the gospel. And there's a promise for Israel to go through the refining fire of the tribulation to be to be delivered from from the wicked prince, the Antichrist, which is contained in the book of Revelation, and then the uh, coming of the kingdom of God from heaven to rescue the Jews from Armageddon, from the surrounding world powers who are conspiring against these people, and uh, to cover them, to cover what cover, covet what they have, and keep them like little jewels in their power. So they have to infiltrate this is Zionism in the political sense, it's an infiltration of the manipulation of the, the true spiritual nature of Zionism. And the, uh, the spirit of Zionism is, Zionism is, is, is righteousness, is uh, King David's um, desire to live um, holy in a holy um, nation. And uh, this is what is uh, this is what uh, the enemy seeks to destroy because it, it, it's opposed to it. It's opposite to it because he wants to dominate. He doesn't want to set people free. He doesn't want uh, equality and uh, freedom. And um, so yeah, there's this conspiring power against the Jews and, and what they stand for and, and the righteousness that, that's part of their inheritance. And um, so I wanted to leave those thoughts and uh, just to consider the blood, you know, you know, what don't we know really about the blood? The rhesus monkey model kind of fits, but uh, who, who, who came up with that? Did somebody with the real knowledge <clears throat> like design the truth and put it into a lie? To conceal a very important truth about who's who, and to to guise disguise the uh, truth about the Jewish people, so that people are double-minded. They're in two minds to well, what is true then? Well, is it this? Is it that? And you get this division, and you get this uh, dialect, you get this uh, um, s split, a fracturing, and you've got that in in the Jews. You've got that in the Gentile world, you've got that in religion, in religions, you've got that in secular beliefs, you've got that in science, you've got that in education, you've got that in politics. Uh, the truth, the Lord came to divide, not to, um, he came to save, but his, uh, his truth divided, it separated the wheat from the chaff. It causes um, it causes division when you when you believe when you, when you believe and receive Jesus Christ you become a leper, and uh, that creates a, a division in your family. You you um, you're among people who don't believe, so you're completely opposite to what you were, and that causes a di division and a, a separation. And then you've got the the uh, people trying to deliberately uh, divide, divide to conquer, you know, to break up the truth, and then to manipulate the outcome. So I wanted to leave those thoughts and uh, encourage people just to uh, trust the Lord if they're struggling to, to grow, because the Lord is faithful, he, he will answer, and he will lead anyone from where they start in their walk to uh, grow in the word and uh, lead you to a um, if you pray and you ask that will lead me to a faithful teacher 
lead me to a uh, faithful ministry, lead me, teach me what is true and what's not, help me be a Berean and grow in the word. And the Lord's faithful and I would have never, ever thought I would come to the understanding and the wonderful knowledge that I, and blessings I've obtained from the Holy Word and I, you know, I'm guilty of neglecting uh, the Word and I find it very difficult to retain things. I turn the page and go blank. It's been a real hard work. So I'm so grateful that the Lord is faithful to lift me up and uh, fill in the blanks and uh, correct me, correct my steps, increase that which I which which I've learned, and to continue growing in the Word and study. So anyone, I'd, you know, pray, trust the Lord, and uh, ask Him, and He will, He's faithful to teach you. It may take time because you got you've got to apply yourself. You've got to do the work. But if you just carry you, you believe, oh Lord, lead me, and you go looking, and you go, oh, it's not that. Oh, it's not that. Oh, here we go. And the Lord's answered your prayer. And then, then you've been edified. You've, you've grown. You've learned something, and you, you grow in confidence. So if you're, if, if you feel like uh, unconfident, and uh, don't be. Just uh, trust the Lord. Believe that He will. He loves you. He will lift you up. Because I, you know, I'm a, as I, I start, stated at the beginning, I'm, I am a brother of low degree. I'm grateful for my testimony that the Lord has uh, made up the difference for me. So if that's you, rejoice that you are you are beloved and the Lord loves you. And I'm close there in the name, the holy precious name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.